Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's Tuesday evening, and uh, it's, it's really windy and blustery, blustery outside. So, blustery? I think that's the word. And it's windy and rainy, kind of. Not exactly raining, but it's drizzly. So um, I'm indoors, and plus it's, it's, it's really late this evening for evening prayer. So I am at the church, not, not at home. Let's pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Our psalm this evening is uh, Psalm 33. Psalm 33, and as I said this morning, we're remembering Theodore, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who died in the year 690. Theodore of Tarsus, Archbishop of Canterbury, died in the year 690. So Psalm 33 is our psalm. First, the refrain. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the lyre, and the ten-stringed heart sing his praise. Sing for him a new song, play skillfully with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord, stand in awe of him, all who dwell in the world. For he spoke and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the designs of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord shall endure forever. The designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord. And the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the children of earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. No king is saved by the might of his host. No warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, and those who wait in hope for his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on you. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer. Feed your people, Lord, with your holy word, and free us from the emptiness of our wrongful desires, that we may sing the new song of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, let's uh, let's do the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. Have mercy on those who fear you. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. Amen. Let's, um, let's go to our first reading tonight, 1 Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8, from verse 63 to chapter 9, verse 9. First Kings 8, from verse 63, to chapter 9, and verse 9. Solomon offered to the Lord a peace offering of 22,000 cattle, cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. And so the king and all the people of Israel dedicated the temple of the Lord. That same day, the king consecrated the central area of the courtyard in front of the Lord's temple. He offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of peace offerings there. Because the bronze altar in the Lord's presence was too small to hold all of the burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings. And Solomon and all Israel celebrated the festival of sh shelters in the presence of the Lord our God. A large congregation had gathered from as far away as Lebo Hamath in the north and the brook of Egypt in the south. The celebration went on for 14 days in all, seven days for the dedication of the altar and seven days for the festival of shelters. After the festival was over, Solomon sent the people home. They blessed the king and went to their homes joyfully and glad because the Lord had been good to his servant David and to his people Israel. In chapter 9. So Solomon finished building the temple of the Lord as well as the royal palace. He completed everything he had planned to do. And the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time, as he had done before at Gibeah. The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your petition. I have set this temple apart to be holy. This place you have built where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. As for you, 
if you will follow me with integrity and godliness as, as David your father did, obeying all my commands, decrees, and regulations, then I will establish the throne of your dynasty over Israel forever. For I made this promise to your father David. One of your descendants will always sit on the throne of Israel. But if you or your descendants abandon me and disobey the commands and decrees I have given you, and if you serve and worship other gods, then I will uproot Israel from this land that I have given them. I will reject this temple that I have made, O holy, to honor my name. I will make Israel an object of mockery and ridicule among the nations. And though this temple is impressive now, all who pass by will be appalled and will gasp in horror. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be, because his people abandoned the Lord, their God, who brought, them an who brought their ancestors out of Egypt, and they worshipped other gods instead and bowed down to them. That is why the Lord has brought all these disasters on them. The, gospel, the, the, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so Solomon is finished with the temple. He has dedicated the temple, offered sacrifices and all of that. That's part of the dedication. And the people celebrated and, and, and had a festival um, and so on. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon and basically said, I heard your prayer, the long prayer that Solomon prayed in chapter 8. Um, God said, I have heard your prayer and I promise that I will be with you. But this is a covenant between the two of us. I will do my part, but you and the people of Israel must do yours. If you abandon my ways, if you follow after other gods, then I will bring this temple down. I will bring this nation to ruin. And it's God's God's threat. <laughs> you know, it's like you don't you 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 abandon my ways, you disobey my laws, and this temple, which is magnificent and awesome now, will be a ruin, and the people will 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 cry the, the people will be sent into exile and so on and of course that very thing happened not 500 years later um, some some 500 years after this uh, or probably less really that exact thing happened the people abandoned god the people followed after foreign gods and they they worship and served idols and uh, and and as a result, God brought judgment upon his own people. And um, in order to purge them, in order to discipline them, God does that, sisters and brothers, that God brings judgment on his people when we do not listen to his command, when we forsake his ways, when we forsake his decrees. God is a God of judgment as much as he's a God of love and goodness and mercy. And the, the, the covenantal relationship that we enter in, into with God or that God has entered into with us, really, is a two-way two street. Uh, God will be with us. He will bless us. He will watch over us. He will, he will um, give us the, dis, the, 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 the... He will dispose to us all that is wonderful and good, all of his might, all of his grace, all he asks of us is that we obey his command, we follow him, we seek to do his will. And that is way too hard for many Christians to do. And that is why, that is why they do not experience, a lot of Christians do not experience the joy and the, 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 the the, the happiness, the, the joy, really, that, that, and the hopefulness that comes from knowing Christ. 
because uh, because they have they have strayed away from God's ways, and 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 when we stray away from God's ways, God's ways, we we suffer the consequences of our actions. You know, when we step out of God's will, there's no telling what is outside there. Uh, all the wolves and the and, and, and the lion that is going to tear us to pieces. And that is God's judgment upon us. When we follow our own sinful devices, our own sinful desires, then what will happen is that we'll bear the, the consequences of our actions. And some of those consequences are, are painful indeed. And we cry out to God and say, Oh God, why me? Why did I have to? Why do I suffer like this? Why? Why does God? Why does God allow such terrible things to happen? The people who pass by says, Why does God allow such terrible things to happen? And, and we may say the same thing in our own lives. Why does God allow this? We know the answer. God allows it because we have walked away from his precepts. We have moved away from his laws. We, have, we are doing our own thing. You know, most Christians hardly ever read their Bible or pray. Um, I mean, they pray when they're in trouble. They read their Bible when they come to church on Sunday. And, you know, we, we, and then we wonder why we don't experience the blessings of God in our lives. Because we don't follow the precepts of God. We don't follow God's, God's will for our lives. And if we don't follow God's will for our lives, then anything is possible. When we step out of God's will, we, 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 there, is no, there is no telling what may happen to us out there in the wilderness. And so that, that, this is the warning to Israel. This is the warning that God has given to Solomon, to the people, and indeed to us, to all of us. Let's get to our New Testament reading. Amen. Let's um, Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to the end. We are, we are in Macedonia, in Philippi. Paul and Silas have gotten in trouble by preaching the gospel and by delivering uh, a slave girl from demon possession and from the slavery uh, that their, her master held her in. And now they have been, they've been thrown into prison, into the deepest dungeon of the prison. And now we pick up the story. At verse 25. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake. And the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open. And the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they, had, they all believed in God. The next morning, the city officials sent the police to tell the jailer, let those men go. But the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said you and Silas are free to leave. Go in peace. But Paul replied, they have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison. And we are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly. Certainly not. Let them come themselves to release us. Wow. When the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. When Paul and Silas left the prison, 
They returned to their home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. <laughs> I love how Paul, uh, you know, uh, assert his rights. You know, I am a Roman citizen. They treated me unjustly, and, and they want to to sleep, you know, um, free us quietly. No, 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 no. We're not going to stand for it. They need to come and apologize uh, to us because because they, 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 somebody needs to be held accountable. And uh, the officials came to the prison, apologized to Paul and Silas for beating them and putting them in prison without a trial. Because the, according to Roman law, if you are a Roman citizen, and not many people have that privilege. I mean, the people who live in the, Roman, in the Roman Empire, most of them weren't Roman citizens. Roman citizenship comes either through birth or through you, you, you bought your citizenship through, you know, through, through money. You become a naturalized citizen, just like it is today. Um, but but what happened? Uh, there were lots of slaves and some people like that who didn't have citizenship, and there were lots of people who 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 had their own ethnic ethnicity and so on. They didn't want Roman citizenship and so forth. But Paul was a Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, were born that way. So here, at least Paul was. So here they found out that these men, though Jewish, because lots of Jews did not become Roman citizens. Paul was a Roman citizen. And by, by putting him in, 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 beating them and then putting them in prison without a trial, that was illegal for Roman citizens. And so Paul required an, uh, an explanation. He wanted an apology. And then he will go. <laughs> So he, he exerted his right. Sometimes, sisters and brothers, we have to stand up for our rights. Um, uh, sometimes we don't. <laughs> sometimes we just need to let it go. But other times, there are times when we need, to, we need to stand up for what is right and just and not allow things to just be uh, swept under the carpet because it will continue. Uh, and people must be held accountable for what they do in public office. And, uh, and so Paul did just that. He gave us an example of something to do even as a believer. But we are told about the story about the jailer that um, while in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now that tells us a lot, sisters and brothers. Here are, here are two of God's, God's believers, disciples, apostles in prison, in the stocks. They are... You know, their, their hands are, are, are in chains, their feet are in chains, their backs are, in, are aching for the beating that they received um, from the lashes. But what are they doing? They're not there and saying, oh God, why are we here? Why me? Why did we ever come over to Macedonia? Why did we ever listen to that vision? And no, 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 they're not doing that. They are singing praises to God. The hymns are very likely the Psalms that they are singing. Because the Psalms were the hymns of the early church. Uh, I mean, the, the, they were the hymns of the Jewish church, um, the Jewish synagogue. And when Christians started, you know, the, the Christian church started, it's, they were singing the Psalms. The Psalms were the hymns. The earliest hymns were the Psalms. So they're very likely they're singing some of the Psalms in the prison. And they are praying. And they are you know, in prison, in, in jail. And the, the, we are told that the other prisoners were listening. This is a fascinating thing. They weren't mocking. They weren't jeering. They weren't, um, they weren't, you know, treating Paul and Silas with some sort of contempt. They were listening. And the idea is that they were listening attentively. They were giving attention to what Paul and Silas were doing. They were interested. It piqued their interest. They wanted to hear they wanted to be part of this. They had an interest, and it's fascinating. We are not told if any of them became believers, but we can assume that some of these prisoners became believers as a result of what they saw and heard that day, that night. Earthquake. Now, during Paul and Silas' worship service, an earthquake happened, and the earthquake burst the, the chains and the doors on the prison. 
the chains of all the prisoners, not just Paul and Silas, all of them. And they could have, they could have all left. But Paul and Silas somehow kept them all there. So that the, the jailer, the jailer's life would be spared. By doing this, Paul and Silas spared the jailer's life. Because if, if he had, uh, uh, was sleeping on the job and all these prisoners escaped, he would have been executed. Which is why he took his sword to kill himself. Because he, he's like, let me do it before they do it to me tomorrow morning. So, so, so Paul, Paul kept all the prisoners in, in the prison out in order to save the jailer's life and in doing that he saved the jailer's soul it's not an amazing story what a story i mean again there could be so much bitterness around here because that jailer was horrible to paul and silas he put paul and silas in the deepest dungeon of the prison and put their feet and, and hands in stocks they didn't need to go to that part of the prison but he did that, you know, out of to, 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 to appease the people in the town who were, who, were, who were upset about Paul and Silas. And so this jailer, there could have been all sorts of animosity and hatred for this jailer. Instead, they, 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 they greeted him with love and grace and told him and, and basically saved his life. And because they saved his life, he wanted to know how his soul could be saved. It wasn't just his life anymore. He wanted to save his soul. What, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Not to be saved from the Roman, from the Roman authority, but to be saved from hell, from sin and death. And Paul says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. All of you will be saved, not just you, but your entire family, if you believe. And that's what happened. He got baptized and all that. And the rest, we are told, is history. So, amazing story. And so, in the end, <laughs> it was great to go to Philippi in, in the end. I mean, despite the fact that they were beaten and put in prison. But God used all of that for his glory and for the, uh, and for the proclamation of the gospel. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Oh Lord and Father, we thank you, O oh God, for bringing us to the end of another day. We are grateful, Lord, for your grace sustaining us through the day. And we ask that you send your holy angels to watch over us tonight as we sleep. So Lord, strength, strengthen us, strengthen our faith stronger in you may we draw nearer to you even as you draw near to us may we be like paul and silas who sing hymns and pray constantly constantly even in prison even in the dungeon lord there's sometimes we are in the dungeon of our lives in the place where we feel that our hands and feet are in stock and we have nowhere to go and most of us cry out in despair. Yet Paul and Silas weren't in despair. They were joyfully worshipping. Lord, give us this kind of faith. So that when we, when we are in the dungeons of our life. When we feel the, the, where our hands and feet are chained to the walls. And we have nowhere to go and we can do nothing. And nothing that we do make any difference in our circumstance. Lord, may we sing praises to you. May we worship. May we pray. May we cry out to you in, 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 in praise. To see you act. To see the walls come crumbling down. To see the, the chains broken. And the dungeon be, be, be illumined with light. And so, Lord, we pray for ourselves tonight. We pray for each other. We pray for all of us that we will be saved through our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, Lord, we, we pray for ourselves tonight. We pray for 
We pray for those who are working tonight. We pray for people who are working out there in this, this uh, windy weather. We pray for the, the police and those who work on the streets and who, who are seeking to keep the rest of us safe through the night. We ask that you would protect them. We pray for doctors, nurses, and carers, and all those who are in the caring industry. The Lord, there's so many who need care in our society, in homes and in hospitals. And so, Lord, we pray for carers and nurses and doctors and surgeons and consultants and all those, Lord, who help and care for others. We pray for them. We pray that you'll be with them tonight as they work and uh, give them strength, give them wisdom, uh, give them, help them to be alert to what's going on so that they will be able to bring the healing and, the, and the, the help to those who need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, as we continue to pray for our world. We pray for the uh, peace in our world. We pray for the places like Ukraine and Syria and Yemen and Sudan and any other place where there is conflict and war. And so, oh God, we ask for you to bring an end to the conflict, bring an end to wars. Lord, where there is war, we pray that you bring peace. Where there is hatred, we ask that you bring love. Where there is despair, we ask that you bring hope. Where there is sadness, we pray for joy. And Lord, where there is uh, where, where, where there is discord or uh, disharmony, we pray, Lord, that you bring harmony into the lives of people everywhere, into corner into the corners of our world, where so many are suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for those who are suffering from natural disasters in our world. We pray. We pray for the people of Libya suffering from that flood and storm. We pray for the people of Morocco and Syria and, and, and Turkey recovering from earthquake. Lord, have mercy upon these people, we pray, and hear the cry of their hearts for help and bring salvation to their lives. Lord, we pray, Lord, uh, well, in, a, in addition to the temporary salvation, we pray that you will bring eternal salvation to their lives. And, and may they find peace in Christ, not just in the physical, but in the spiritual. And so, Lord, we pray for the aid agencies and all those who are in, on the ground, uh, helping, helping the people recover from these disasters. Uh, give them the resources they need, Lord. Give them the, the give them the, the grace to be kind and compassionate to those who are in need. And may they give, as it were, a cup of cold water in the name of Christ. And so, Lord, hear our prayer for these people who are suffering and wherever else in our world and as a result of the change in our climate that the weather patterns are causing um, cr um, uh, causing uh, death and destruction in various parts of our world so lord have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy and finally lord we pray we pray for the sick and suffering. We pray for those in our own church family who are sick tonight, those who are suffering, those who are frail in mind and body. Remember those who are under, who are suffering from the recent strain of COVID, and especially as we go into the winter, those who are, who, who are suffering from the flu or COVID or any of these, uh, these winter diseases, um, we pray we pray, Lord, that you protect us all from this, from this COVID disease that's still around and still a menace to our lives. We pray for your protection 
We pray for your shield around us so that we will be we will be immune to this thing and that lord you'll protect our body and spirit and mind from ever getting infected in this way and so lord we pray for those who are not well tonight we pray for those who are in pain or in any form of pain we pray for those who are undergoing cancer treatment lord in your mercy hear our prayer and have pity on these your children lord hear us lord graciously hear us and so we say our collect for this evening abide with us lord for it is evening and the day is drawing to a close abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day in the evening of life in the evening of the world Abide with us and with your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look kindly upon you. May the Lord grant you rest and peace tonight, sisters and brothers, as you sleep. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.